Hello Santiago amigos, welcome to another crammed episode of the Old Man and the CV. So let's get on with episode 14. We're delighted to be joined by Toby Arnold for this episode. Toby spent a 35-year career spread across Ford and then Jaguar Land Rover with 20-plus years at senior management level. He worked in the UK, Europe and the US and had global roles for 18 years. So had exposure to different ways of thinking, working and living in different communities. Some of that time was spent specifically looking at understanding present and future market and consumer attitudes and trends. Since ending paid work two years ago, he doesn't like the word retired, quite rightly so. He now spends his time supporting local sports, nature and wildlife groups through voluntary work. Toby, welcome. Hi, Andy. Uh, Thanks very much. I'm delighted to be here. Can you tell our listeners a little bit more about the volunteering work that you currently do? Uh, Yes, Uh, I mean, I've always tended to put my hand up um, at the local hockey club, Warwick Hockey Club. I'd previously been a committee member and then about five years ago I became chairperson. And I've also been doing three other roles this last season, but I'm actually in the process of stepping down now. and one of the reasons for that is, as well as to give someone with new ideas a chance to shape the club's future direction. Because since stopping paid work uh, in March 21, I've been spending most of my time volunteering in the outdoors, mostly with Warwickshire Wildlife Trust, where I'm a local work party leader for three reserves, and also work in three others further away. Um, I also volunteer with Friends of Abbey Fields, which is a fantastic uh, resource of a local park we've got here. Um, The Warwick Sports Club in the grounds and buildings um, as part of Talisman Square Gardeners, where we've taken a a local town centre car park and about a dozen of us have brightened it up with planting. Um, And then Be Friendly Kenworth, a group that encourages pollinators and residents supporting pollinators. Um, And there are probably a, a couple of other groups as well I'm involved with. I know that volunteering brings many benefits, such as confidence and purpose, social engagement and so on. Um, Have you got a few examples of where you've seen that work? Uh, Yes, Um, you mentioned confidence and that's something I had to work on early in my career, but I was fortunate enough to work for big businesses that provide training and opportunities to work in very different teams and environments around the world. So my confidence to work in diverse teams and take the lead grew. However, one of the things I've seen is that volunteer environments throw together people of often very different work backgrounds, from small businesses, council employees, multinational workers, individual entrepreneurs or business owners, people just out of school or college, although retired for 20 years plus. And while some have confidence in new groups and know the latest technologies, Others are more reticent to come forward. However, the the, the basics of volunteering are that most are not experts and they're there to listen, to learn, to share and to socialise, as well as get something achieved for the greater good. And in that environment and with open attitudes, confidence in a range of things can grow in both younger and older people. I also think that the pandemic and the associated lockdowns not the sense of purpose and social engagement that some people have in their lives. I mean, I've, I've got friends who, when they finished paid work, they helped out at schools using their knowledge, experience and talent, uh, especially where there was a shortage of qualified science teachers to run the more practical applications. Um, as you sort of look into the background of this, I know the Chartered Institute of Personal and Development and a charity called Education Employees wrote a report a couple of years ago that showed volunteering in schools and colleges can not only help with developing critical employability skills for those that volunteer, but also it can have a huge positive impact on their mental well-being and motivation. And then, then you get the knock-on effect from employers' perspective, it helps retain their people and become an employer of choice. Whilst the young people are getting exposed to the world of work, the opportunities, core skills are required, and that gives them confidence uh, to aspire. 
But another area of benefits is just basic transfer of skills. In, in very simple terms, the brain's just another muscle which needs to be worked to keep it fit. And there are many community groups and charities desperately in need of some skills, which the business world takes for granted. I mean, every community group I know, certainly, that has a purpose, members and funds to raise and spend, needs a chairperson, a treasurer, a, a membership secretary, somebody to do the communications, coordination, social media and, and web stuff. Um, somebody to organise events, and then finally a secretary to keep them all in line. Um, but each of these roles benefits hugely from someone who has technical as well as, well as social skills to fulfil those specific roles. But there appears to be a huge shortage of people stepping forward to provide a few hours each week or month for these community groups and charities. There are obvious educational and purposeful benefits, but there are long term societal benefits as well. And it seems that many other countries do this better than the UK. Why and how are the other countries better at it than us? That, that's a huge question. Um, but the basic answer is it's down to culture. And some countries have volunteering deeply embedded for example, if, if you look at the most recent Charities Aid Foundation 2022 World Giving Index, I know that's a bit of a mouthful, um, but that report, the top two countries with the highest rate of volunteering were Indonesia and Kenya. And that's probably due in part to the Indonesian principle of Gotong Royong, where communities help and support each other during times of disaster. Whereas in Kenya, there's a philanthropic tradition in Harambe, which means an event to raise funds for charity that unites people in times of need, like during the pandemic. And interestingly, in that 2022 World Giving Index for Volunteering, there's only one high income country that occupied in top 10 space, and that's the USA. In my experience of living and working in the US and with many US citizens over the year, there's much more encouragement from a very young age to contribute to your local community in whatever way you can than there is in the UK. And you know, some of this, again, historically dates back to the 1700s when Benjamin Franklin founded the first volunteer firehouse. And today, perhaps surprisingly, over 70 percent or around 70 percent of American firefighters are still volunteers. Of course, also there have been spikes in volunteer around things like 9-11 and more recently the pandemic. And you see this in other countries where disaster strikes, unfortunately. However, um, you know, in America, uh, one of the former presidents, President Reagan, once said, no matter how big and powerful the government gets and the many services it provides, it can never take the place of volunteers. So I think it is truly embedded in US society, that idea of volunteering. Volunteering is woven into the fabric of our society. If you look at sports clubs that you mentioned earlier, you know, they're run by volunteers, grassroots level sports. But I'd also say that volunteering is is not just for people looking for this short-term fix between roles, is it? Thinking, well, I'm not working at the moment, I can contribute for a sh certain short period of time. Because I would suspect that there are many people who have dedicated their lives so far to say raising a family, running the home, and then there's a new sense of purpose when those fledglings finally leave the nest and um, what about examples of this do you have have any examples of that yeah you, you're you're right andy i mean volunteering is good for people to give and receive benefits from at many different times in their lives um it was only recently i was i was listening to a radio program about someone who'd been very successful in their career ultimately but when they took a few years out to have their children it was really very difficult to get opportunities to re-enter the full-time paid workforce and volunteering which can be very flexible is a good way to try to keep your existing skills home and develop new ones whilst you're filling a gap. How, however there are still many parents who decided that 
one would devote more of their time and energy to bringing up the family. So it isn't until the children are reasonably independent, not to say completely, uh, that one parent gets more time to develop and redevelop skills and, and through community service and charity sector. For example, my wife was a volunteer of some sort since she was a mid-teenager. And over the past few years, she's taken on more and more roles in differing groups, becoming a chair of one, treasurer of another, and heavily involved in others. By applying all skills that she learned many years ago in civil service, um, which have been underused, and now she's been developing a set of new ones. And I see the positive outcomes for her, but also others like her, similar situation, who've joined uh, various groups, and for the community. I also know some house husbands who saw volunteering as a way to reconnect with the world after the pandemic and made them feel more isolated. Volunteering has many benefits and you have spoken wonderfully about many of them. But what would be the key message that you would like our listeners to take away from, from your podcast today, Toby? Uh, that would be that there are dozens of community and charity organizations needing your skills. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are some key positions just to run a small organization like a treasurer or membership secretary or social media coordinator. But there are loads of other areas where technical, physical and mental skills are required. Uh, my, my local uh, wildlife trust, for example, has roles in education, in the office and visitor center, uh, for those who want to do surveys or for other outdoor jobs like I do. And in addition, other volunteers and those organisations that you can join can help you keep your skills sharp and teach you new ones, whilst you all benefit your local community and your own personal well-being. Uh, for those that prefer to participate and not to lead, some organisations have taster sessions, so you get a feeling of what it would be like to regularly contribute. So, Andy, I think that's uh, three key messages, including the plug for the Wildlife Trust. So um, hopefully that's uh, what you need. And I think your plug for the Wildlife Trust is uh, well earned. Um, Toby, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us on The Old Man and the CV. Um, Toby Arnold, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, I think you'll agree that that was a very interesting perspective. From a personal point of view, a few years ago, I had a little bit of time on my hands. And to cut a long story short, I reached out to our local Chamber of Commerce and went out and saw local businesses on a pro bono basis, offering sales, marketing and customer experience strategy support. And some of these companies had no idea about certain aspects of that. And as a previous guest has said, sometimes until you step outside of yourself, you don't realize the experience and the knowledge that you've got to be able to pass on to other people. And I can say hand on heart that it was one of the most fulfilling things that I've ever done in my career. So if you do find time to give a little bit of your experience and knowledge to a local business or charity or school, where they can leverage what you've got to make their lives better, then I can thoroughly recommend it. It's good for the head and the brain, and it's great for the soul and the heart too. So um, if you'd like to reach out to Toby, his details will be in the episode notes. And I put in a cheeky little link to the Wildlife Trust in case you want to learn more about that as well. Well, that's all we've got time for this week, I'm afraid. Thank you again to my special guest, Toby Arnold. Don't forget to check out our sponsor's details in the episode notes. Quick Brown Fox PR. Just time for the credits for the music intro and the idents. Have you got your money on? This is an almost pro production for 23 Magic, copyright 2023. See you next week, Santiago Amigos. <laughs>